Hi friends, uh, welcome back to Coffee with Ravi. Today we have a guest with us. I'd like to introduce Pat Caldwell. Mm -hmm. Pat has been a nurse for 18 years, out of which 14 of them have been uh, gastroenterology nursing. In addition, he has had additional certification in GI nursing from a board called Society of Gastroenterology Nurses and Associates. So that's an over and above qualification to the RN. He's also a good educator, and recently uh, in our office, he has talked about pancreatic cancer. I thought this would be a good topic to bring back because while a tough topic, it's important to raise awareness, and through increased awareness, I'm hoping that we catch cancer earlier. So Pat, uh, welcome. And Thank you very uh, much. Uh, if you uh, want to tell uh, our patients mm -hmm. what you had shared with for the staff, sure. I think about pancreatic cancer, how it presents, what do should they look for, what are the treatments, mm -hmm. and while a tough topic, uh, uh, I thought you had done a very good job uh, uh, bringing the awareness uh, to our staff. So okay. um, we'll talk to our patients about this today. All right, thanks for the chance to, to talk here. Um, I wanted to talk about the pancreatic cancer. When we set it as a goal of the Digestive Health Center to raise awareness, I realized I didn't really know a lot about the disease. And we all know it's a serious diagnosis, but it occurred to me uh, that if we answer a series of questions, this is gonna help us raise awareness. So some of those questions that I wanted to answer in my presentation were, what? well, first off, what is a pancreas? What does it do? Where is it? What are the risk factors for pancreatic cancer? And can pancreatic cancer be prevented? How do we detect it and how do we diagnose this? And then what are some of the things on the horizon for treating pancreatic cancer? And in all of this, what we wanna do is what's the best thing for our patients. Yeah, and, and hopefully they can use this information to kind of be on, a, be, be on the, uh, 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 be aware, uh, more aware, more aware, more aware yeah. of what's going on. Yeah. So if you're looking at the screen, you should see two um, illustrations of a human being that's kind of transparent. So what and where is the pancreas? If you look at these two uh, figures, you'll see the pancreas is sort of an orange yellow colored organ. To me, it looks like a fish making a left turn and it is located right behind your stomach and in front of your spinal column. Now, if you try, you can't feel it with your fingers. It's too far inside. And if the pancreas is hurting you, you really can't tell that it's your pancreas because it'll feel just like a stomach ache. Yeah. Now, like, just, just like many other GI conditions. Everything exactly, is, exactly. It's a stomach ache. You yeah, know? Exactly. It's a general, something's wrong, but you don't know what. Now, as far as what the pancreas does, it's got a couple of main functions. It manufactures digestive uh, enzymes that help us to chemically break down the fat, the carbohydrate, and the protein in our diet. And along with that, it manufactures insulin and glucagon, which help regulate the blood sugar in our bloodstream. So it's got twofold function, right. both digestion and also blood, it's a hormonal function. It's, to it. it is, it's, a, it's an endocrine and an exocrine gland yeah. in, in medical terms. So what are the risk factors for pancreatic cancer? Well, they fall into two categories. On the left side of the screen, you'll see the genetic risk factors for pancreatic cancers, and then the non-genetic risk factors. Now that list on the left includes a number of conditions that you might have heard the names of, like Lynch syndrome and Putz-Jaeger syndrome. Um, there are several more. These are genetic abnormalities that predispose a person to pancreatic cancer. And if you have one of these, you know you have one of these, I think the best thing that you can do is stay in touch with your provider because there might be a point at which they want to do some further studies to track whether you're developing pancreatic cancer. And on these genetic condition folks, the main thing is that there are other sets of conditions associated with it. So this is not something that is silent, but there are other groups of cancers and most times they would have already been picked up. So don't Think too much, but if there's a group of cancer clustering in the family, bring it to the attention of your provider. Yes, exactly. Now on the non-genetic factor side, there are things you might expect, and there are some things that are more or less under our control, like smoking or diabetes, chronic pancreatitis, obesity, age over 65, alcohol abuse, and infection with a bacteria called Helicobacter pylori, which is also associated with gastric ulcers. But the number one risk factor that's non-genetic is a combination of smoking, long-term diabetes, and poor diet. 
So the next question is, can pancreatic cancer be prevented? Well, according to Mayo and the National Institutes of Health, where I'm getting most of my information, you, there is no real silver bullet to make sure you won't get pancreatic cancer, but you can improve your odds. And again, these are kind of common sense things. Don't smoke. Uh, maintain a healthy weight. In your diet, if you consume a lot of colorful fruits and vegetables and whole grain foods, that's going to improve your chances. And of course, limit alcohol consumption. Now, this is not a, a question of being perfect because none of us is perfect. If you have issues in these areas, it's really just taking care of yourself. We just take care of ourselves. And some of these, as we've covered in previous coffee posts, also help with other GI oh, yeah. cancers too. Oh, the, yeah. You know, preventing smoking, eating a healthy right. diet, exercising, mm -hmm. staying lean weight, all of those uh, uh, play into cancer prevention too. Especially those deep colored fruits and vegetables, yes. they tend to contain things that help us prevent cancer. So they're, all, they're good for other reasons too. Now, how is it detected and how is it diagnosed? I got a list of symptoms from the Mayo Foundation and I'm going to go through them thing to remember about these is these are general symptoms if you have one of these it does not mean you have pancreatic cancer but these are some of the symptoms abdominal pain that radiates to the back a loss of appetite or an unintended weight loss the skin uh, or the sclera the white part of the eye turning yellow light colored stools dark colored urine itchy skin and things as general as blood clots or fatigue may indicate maybe a symptom of pancreatic cancer along with a sudden a new diagnosis of diabetes or diabetes suddenly out of control. All of these symptoms have other causes as well. And in pancreatic cancer, they tend to occur when the pancreatic cancer is advanced, which is one of the tough things about treating this disease. Now, a provider may order imaging studies like a CT scan or an MRCP or an MRI to detect a pancreatic tumor. There are blood tests that will indicate something general may be wrong, like a liver function test, tumor markers, but the definitive diagnosis of pancreatic cancer comes from a, a, a biopsy of a pancreatic tumor. And this is something that, that is done by the providers here in Digestive Health Center. Uh, EUS means an endoscopic ultrasound, and with an endoscopic ultrasound, they can put a scope into your stomach against the back wall and use an, an, uh, an ultrasound emitter that gives a really good picture of the pancreas and they can even take a biopsy of it. That's something we do here. Now, genetic testing might be ordered by, at some point by a provider. Imaging studies may be ordered for, uh, for patients with a, a history of pancreatic cancer in the family or one of those predisposing genetic conditions we talked about, but they're not generally done for the whole population because they're so expensive and time consuming. Time consuming. Right. So those screening tests, folks, are in general CAT scans or x-rays of the belly or endoscopic ultrasounds, but really the short answer is that as a population screening tool, it just doesn't work uh, uh, to screen everybody. That's the unfortunate right. thing about pancreatic cancer. Right. Now, treatments for pancreatic cancer at the present are mainly surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation. Of these, surgery is the most effective, but there are some hopeful avenues of research that I ran across when I was reading about this. One of them is just finding ways to make chemotherapy more effective against pancreatic cancers. Another involves eliminating certain bacteria in our intestines that seem to somehow help the pancreatic cancer develop. Um, they're, they're looking to find an early, reliable biomarker for pancreatic cancer. And this would be like a gold standard. This would be great if they could take a blood test and say, aha, there it is, it's, it's starting to develop. That would be a huge improvement in the treatment and catching of pancreatic and cancer early. early. And they are working on this. They're also working on ways to slow the spread of the cancer once it does develop to give a person better quality of life and longer life. And then they are working on attacking certain agents which occur outside of the actual cancer cells, but those agents get uh, sort of uh, taken over by the cancer to help it develop along. They're looking at attacking the cancer indirectly. Different ways, right. in different ways to attack the cancer. Yep, the, other than the traditional ones. Chemotherapy and of, radiation, right. yes. Now, as far as takeaways from this talk, things that I'd like people to remember, they're, they're simple. Take care of yourself. Don't smoke. 
try to maintain a healthy diet and ex healthy weight and, and exercise. In terms of your diet, lots of fruits, lots of vegetables, lots of whole grain foods, and limiting the alcohol. And again, none of us is perfect. This is, this is just a matter of trying to do a little better. And if you do have one of those predisposing conditions, stay in touch with your provider. Provider, yep. yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, and I think that's, that's really the takeaway here, uh, because by the time that we detect it, sometimes it's a little more of a challenge to deal with it. So these would be the preventative aspects, but keep in mind that these are the you know, vast array of ways that pancreatic cancer can present. So thank you, uh, and thank you, Pat, uh, for doing this. Uh, we'll continue to take questions from you. We appreciate the support. Uh, I can't tell you how many, how many of you have made comments to us, to me, uh, sent in comments, and we appreciate the encouragement and take this seriously, and we want to continue to educate you about various topics uh, that will empower you to take care of your own health. We hope okay. to see you again next week.